DDoS attacks or distributed denial of service attacks have become enormously prevalent in recent years. Just before recording this, I thought I'd go and grab some headlines just to show the sort of thing that's going on at the moment. And the headlines that you see appearing on the screen now have all been from just the last few weeks. I wasn't even aware of many of these. They simply weren't significant enough in my news feed to even stand out. I'm sure that many of these weren't even on the front page. I'm sure that many of these never even got much airtime. DDoS attacks are now so common that they're often not even reported on. Now, of course, the really large ones, or the ones that do have serious impact on the target, will make the headlines. But there are a huge number of DDoS attacks that are either small in nature, have very low impact, so they might be very short-lived, or they impact a lower value target that simply isn't even newsworthy. But before we go on, let's just take a quick look at precisely what a DDoS attack is. When we talk about a distributed denial of service attack, we're talking about many different attackers all targeting the one service. So conceptually, it looks a little bit like this. Now these guys might be spread out all over the world, and we'll look at some ways that that can happen in just a moment. But they're all targeting the one system. And DDoS attacks very frequently tend to be volumetric. So that is, all of these attackers are trying to send sufficient malicious traffic to the target website such that it can't service legitimate requests. So to pick a physical world example, imagine you have too many people trying to fit through a doorway at the one time. They can't. They get jammed. If it's just a normal rate of people, that's fine. They go through without any problem. But when you try and squeeze way too many through at the same time, you end up with service being denied. The legitimate people that want to use the doorway can't get through because there's too many other people trying to get through at the same time. And in very simplistic terms, that tends to be what happens in a DDoS attack. Get enough people trying to jam packets through to a web server at the same time, and it's going to struggle to handle the legitimate ones. These attacks also often tend to be globally distributed. They come from all over the world. And that's one of the things that can actually make them extremely difficult to defend against. If those attacks originate from foreign countries, tracking down the perpetrators and indeed stopping the attacks can be extremely difficult. I'd like to show you a fantastic visualization of what a DDoS attack looks like. And in fact, what I want to show you is what DDoS attacks that are occurring right now look like. Let's go and take a look. The Norse map of real-time DDoS attacks is mesmerizing. This is what is happening now. This is where we are seeing attacks originating from and being directed to. And as you can see, they're going all over the world. Look at some of the origins in the table in the bottom left, and indeed some of the attack targets as well. Certainly you do see a pattern with particular countries, which in itself is quite interesting. We also see different attack types, so attacks that exploit different protocols, different ports, and bombard those with huge amounts of data, which again make it very difficult for the target system to actually serve legitimate requests. One of the other things that should stand out on this map is just how many different locations there are sending these attacks. And certainly if you go and take a look at the URL in the address bar now, you'll probably see quite a different pattern. Different attacks originating from different locations and targeting different services. This shows you just how prevalent these DDoS attacks have become. But of course, it then begs the question, how do you launch a DDoS attack? Let me show you a couple of different ways. 